Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my video tutorials. Today I'm going to show you how to convert object between R and Python. So the easiest way to convert object between R and Python is to use R Markdown. So if you are using R Studio, you can start from files, new files. You can see you can create a R Markdown file. Let's create a new one. So you can see here is the new R Markdown file. In R Markdown, if you set up your R environment and connect to Python, then you can use Python in R Markdown. For example, if you want to write Python code, you can just insert Python code. You can see here we can write our Python code here. So I showed you how to create a R Markdown files. So for today's demonstration, we have files here already. So in order to use Python in R Studio, you need to set up your R environment. So we can install the R environment package to set up our R environment. If you are a Python user, you can use Conda or the virtual environment to set up your Python environment. So you can see we just need to install the package. I installed the package already. You can see in my package is Windows. We can see our environment. Then after that, we can call the package to create an R environment. So the best way to do this is you create a new folder. For example, here you can see I have a folder here to store all my data. If you initiate the R environment package, it will automatically save your analysis. Because I set up my R environment already, I'm talking through the process of setting up, but I'm not going to run the code. So once you created an R environment on your computer, next step is to install the reticulate package. This is the package that we can interact with Python in R environment. You can see in the package windows, I have the reticulate package installed. Then after we install the reticulate package, then we tell our environment and that we want to use the Python environment as well. Even you install the other packages in your R, but if you set up a new R environment, you need to install all the packages that are required for your data analysis. For example, for today's video tutorial, we need to install the R environment reticulate PNG tidy version and the threat packages for analyzing single RNA sequencing data in R. Then we also need to install the Python packages SCANPY and the Python iGraph. So I installed all the packages already, so we can just load the packages now. First, we can load the R package, reticulate, throughout and the tidyverse. If we run, you can see we loaded the throughout package and the tidyverse to analyze the single cell RNA sequencing data in R. Next, we need to run a Python code. You can see here, we need to import the scanpy as SC. So we can run the code to import the scanpy package. You can see in my environment windows, we have Python here. We have the scanpy package as SC. So now we can use Python in our studio. You can see here, we are going to run Python code. First, we can load the demonstration data. This is a processed PBMC 3K data. We can use the SC 
read the function from the scan file package to load the data. So now we are going to run a Python code. If we run, you can see we loaded the data, and uh, this data is in my data files. Here you can see it is PBMC 3K processed H5AD file. The processed data has 2,638 cells and 1,838 genes. You can see in the observations, we have the N genes, percentage mitochondria DNA, N counts, and the knowing cell clusters. Also, we have the variables as the N cells. You can see in the observation multi layers, we have the PCA, TSNI, and the UMAP information. Now you can see in the environment windows, we noted the A data in our studio. So we can have a look at the cell canisters because we aimed to convert the scan type object into threat object and produce the same UMAP. So we can plot the UMAP for the A data. Let's run. You can see we generated the UMAP for the A data. Here are the cell canisters. So we noted the A data. And also, we can see the cell clusters. Next, we can convert the A data into a threat object. So now we are going to run R code. You can see here, it's the chunk for R code. So we can get all the data information from the A data. We know the expression values are in the X data slot in A data. Then we can get it as expression data. You can see we also need to transpose the data because the column names and the row names are opposite in Python as in R. So we need to transpose the data to get the expression data from a data. Later we can use it to create a threat object. With this code, we will get the expression data, and also we need the column names and the row names. So the column names for the expression data will be observation names in the A data, then we can get it from there, and also row names, they are G names. We can get the G names from the A data variable names. If we run this code, we will create the expression data in R. So let's run. You can see now it changes to my R environment. We have a expression data frame. Let's connect the data frame and have a look. You can see here are the expression data frame. The row names are gene names and the column names are cells. So we got the expression data from a data. Next, we can use the create threat object function to create a threat object. So the count will be the expression data. At the same time, we can get the metadata from a data. Because the observations in the a data are the metadata, so we can just set the observations as the metadata when we create the threat object. So now we can create the threat object as a threat. Let's run. OK, you can see in my R environment windows, we have a threat object. We can click and have a look. You can see we have the C as RNA. At the moment, we only have the layers. We don't have the data layer here. And we got the metadata. You can see we have the origin, ident, n count, RNA, n feature RNA, n genes, percentage mitochondria DNA, n counts, and the cell types in the win column. And in the reduction, you can see it is a zero. We haven't added the UMAP information. But I should you at the moment here in the C, we only have the layers. So next, we can set the C data. 
you can see here we can set the C data the data from the expression. At the moment, you can see the true at object is only 59.2 megabyte. If we set the, the C data, let's set it. You can see now the true at object became 98 megabyte. If we have a look at the true at object, you can see now in the, the says RNA layers, we have a data layer here. So next, we can add the feature data from the A data to the threat object. The feature data will be the N cells. We can just run this code to get the N cells from A data to the threat object. That's the N cells in the RNA data slot. Let's add the N cells. So we are gradually building up the threat object. After that, we can get the UMAP information. I should you the UMAP information in the A data. It's in the observation multiple layers. So we can get the UMAP from there, name it as the embedding. At the same time, we need to get the observation names. They are the cell barcode as the row names for the UMAP. And we named the column names for the embedding as UMAP1 and UMAP2. Once we get the correct UMAP information, we can use the create dim reduction object function to add the UMAP information in the threat object. If we run the code chunk here, let's run. You can see we have the embedding information. If we click and have a look, you can see the row names are the cell buckles. We have UMAP1 in the first column and the UMAP2 in the second column. If you have a look at the threat object now, you can see in the reduction, we have the UMAP information. So now we got all the data information from A data to a threat object. So we know the cell type information are in the knowing column. So we can just set the cell types using the cell type information from the knowing column. Then we can use the dim plot to see the cell clusters. So this is the last step for today's demonstration if we run. You can see we generated the cell clusters now. You can see we have the same UMAP for all the cell clusters compared to the A data cell clusters. The only difference is in Python, the color for each cell cluster is different. So now you can see we converted the A data into a threat object. We got the threat object in the our environment of Windows. So you can save this threat object as the RDS object. Then perform any analysis you want to do in the R Studio. Okay, that's today's demonstration. So I show you how to set up our environment. Then convert a data object into threat object. And you can see we can create the exactly same UMAP from a data to a threat object. So I'm going to stop from here for today's demonstration. In my next video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use this R environment and in R Markdown to convert a threat object to a data. So I hope to see you in my next video tutorial.